Hello, this is the robot speaking. Yes, you heard that right. I'm going to give the presentation. Hey, no! Okay, over to you then. Hey, great, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for the wonderful int introduction, but this is uh, about me. Um, so uh, probably most of us would have seen uh, the robots only in the movies, right? Uh, probably we don't think uh, robots impact us as much, right? That's the general thought process. But think again, right? So I'm sure almost everybody has a mobile phone and most of you have traveled in cars, right? So you can definitely take it that almost all the mobiles that you uh, have, you know, robots have played a key role in terms of manufacturing. And as well as in terms of the uh, automobile manufacturing, robots have really, really helped in creating much, much better cars. So now you can see two different cars, right? So do you see any major difference between these two cars? No, right? It's almost the same. But, you know, the, the one on the left is a regular car, whereas the one on the right, it's a complete autonomous car. It's a kind of a robotic car, you know, it's a Tesla, right? So where you can just enter the location that you want to go and the, the car will drive itself. It's pretty amazing, right? So, and this is uh, available, uh, you know, in the US and parts of Europe. So you can, you know, there have been cases where people have had a heart attack while driving and then they just entered the hospital's location and they passed off and the car took them to the hospital. So, so robots are not just helping in building cars. So we have gone to an age where there are robotic cars, you know, which can travel by itself. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure most of you would have also ordered through online, right? In Amazon or Flipkart. You know who's uh, helping in terms of sorting all your orders? You know who's the first entity which goes and picks the item what you've ordered? It is the robots. They essentially bring the shelves and then there is a person who's standing who just picks it from the shelf. So imagine, let's say we just recently had a Amazon day, right? A lot of offers and things like that. Uh, you know, in two days, probably they would have had close to about 20 million orders. Imagine human beings processing it, going to shelf, picking it, 20 million. What is the kind of workforce, right? And this is, I'm not talking about US or some other place. This is, I'm talking in Bangalore. You know, I'm talking in warehouses, wherever Flipkarts and Amazons are there. And of course, uh, in uh, surveillance and defense, robots have played a very key role. So uh, we have seen robots in the Hollywood movies and of course also in Tamil movies. So this is uh, one of the robots that we had built uh, for a movie called Mugamudi, which re you know, released a couple of years back. So it's a full uh, six feet humanoid. The director was uh, Mishkin and Jiva was the hero. So, and uh, I was the ghost scientist. Um, so Grish Kanat plays the role of the scientist uh, and uh, the objective was to build a, you know, scientist lab. So uh, we just developed a full-scale robot which can do a whole bunch of things. So it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, this is an animatronics uh, we did for uh, a movie called I for Shankar. Uh, this is a uh, telepresence robotic platform. Uh, one of our other uh, uh, inventions. So this is uh, more like uh, video conferencing on wheels. You know, uh, so say for instance, I was sitting in Chennai and this event was happening in Mumbai. So I can kind of move around, talk to people. So it is not just static. I can just move around, you know, and then see what is happening. I can talk to people and stuff like that. Uh, this is uh, a banking robot, which we developed uh, in collaboration with Polaris. Um, so imagine, uh, so it, you know, uh, it is not just about taking cash. You can just go to the robot, put your fingerprint, connect it to the Aadhaar, create a bank account, and uh, instantly get your ATM card. So creating a bank account should take less than two minutes, 
and you will instantly get your ATM card. So let's say you lost your card or your credit card, you can still go to a bot, you know, and then get the uh, replacement cards. So when all these things are happening, you know, uh, currently. Um, so this is one of the other uh, robots, uh, which is a robot for breast cancer diagnosis. This is in collaboration with uh, Dr. Kamakoti from IIT Madras and uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan from Patterson Cancer Institute in Chennai. Um, so uh, the traditional uh, uh, diagnosis is more of a very intrusive. So here you would have seen the robot uh, moving around, taking snapshots from different angles. And then a full 3D image is essentially built. And then uh, on top of this, uh, we will be able to do uh, uh, image processing and as well as feature extraction and try and find out, uh, you know, you're using machine learning techniques, try and find out whether tumor is there. If the tumor is there, it is at what stage and at what location and this is at what confidence metrics. So uh, a, a process where, uh, you know, uh, which is very intrusive, which is uh, fairly costlier, we have brought down the time of uh, diagnosis by one third and the cost by one tenth. So if, if we can talk about numbers that are close to about uh, 50 million women who need to be scanned on a yearly basis. And the infrastructure that we have is, uh, you know, uh, about 0.1 million. So that's the kind of infrastructure we have. And also the costing is also higher. And uh, especially with uh, uh, respect to uh, cancer diagnosis, uh, especially the breast cancer. The sooner you diagnose and keep track, the easier it is in terms of uh, um, doing the medication or uh, trying to cure it. So it, it is one of the uh, most important challenges and, uh, you know, we have done. Uh, then uh, some of you might have heard of uh, 3D printing. You know, that is another kind of a robot where you can kind of come out with the designs and then print the kind of things that you want to do. So um, so I, I had the uh, head of uh, uh, Ramakrishna Mutt. So, you know, they essentially work with uh, leprosy patients. And uh, he was essentially saying, hey, Balaji, you know, you do a whole bunch of robots. So here is a problem. So try and help us, uh, you know, solve it. So they constantly have all these uh, exposures. So you can see the particular patient so these are all cured uh, leprosy patients, but because of the exposure that they have, you know, it, it constantly creates a lot of trouble for them. And there is also uh, a social stigma when people see, right? So what we had essentially done is uh, try to take a 3D mapping and uh, do some kind of 3D printing and 3D molding where you can essentially see the footwear which looks like a feet. Right? So now the uh, leprosy patients can essentially wear a, f a foot like footwear where their uh, cured leprosy uh, parts are covered. So it helps them to protect those things as well as in terms of um, the social stigma where when people see, uh, you know, the uh, disoriented feet which creates uh, you know, trouble for them. So th that also is kind of covered. And the overall uh, uh, cost is also less than 500. So, you know, I mean, and it's less than $10, right? So, which can really help them. So, so now this is um, another uh, uh, good karma project, what we call. So this is in collaboration with uh, Stanley Medical College. So coming out with an affordable robotic fingers, which can help in uh, doing day-to-day -day activities. So here you can see the patient, uh, you know, who is able to lift a water bottle, right? So uh, uh, the idea was to come out with uh, uh, a moving robotic fingers using which they can kind of do day-to-day uh, -day tasks and also for uh, the, the patients, it is also important that it looks and feels like a an hand and helps them do, you know, um, some of the basic tasks, let's say opening a door or li lifting a water bottle and things like that, right? So, and these make a huge impact. So we have made the design and made it as open source with a combination of, uh, you know, a simple uh, uh, 
um, servo motors and 3D printing, we were able to come out with these kind of designs. So, um, so as you would have seen, the impact of robots is like fairly huge from automotive to 3D printing to medical to defense. And all these things are happening right now. Uh, besides that, there is also a lot of AI layer you would have seen in some of the other robots where it can kind of self-navigate and then move around and things like that. So there are also a whole bunch of voice robots. I'm sure most of you would have used Alexa or Siri, right? Uh, you know, where you can kind of ask questions and it will kind of, you know, give you the relevant answers. And there is also a lot of personalization. So it is not just becoming one size fits all. So it is going to be uh, uh, based on interaction. These bots are going to learn, right? And then try and give personalized answers. So let's say, uh, what is the best place to visit in New York? If you're going to ask that question, the answer will be different for you and different for me, right? So that's going to be the personalization. So based on our activity and based on our interests, based on our interaction with these bots, how the recommendation systems are changing, how based on your demography, how based on your uh, age and cultural uh, you know, segment, how these uh, things are going to change. So there is a lot of learning that is happening with the robots, with the software bots, and uh, it, it is helping them in terms of understanding us a lot better and provide solutions which are very, very specific to us or our segment per se. And of course, uh, most of you would have heard, you know, used or heard of chatbots. And a lot of automation is also happening. So typically, if you see uh, the next generation of most of the apps or applications or websites are going to be either, at, you know, uh, uh, text chat bots or just a voice chat bots where you can just go and ask, hey, I'm looking for this. Can you help me find it? So you no, no longer have to go and uh, search for an item in Amazon. You can just, you know, it'll be something like a Siri button and, hey, I want to buy a mobile phone, give me recommendations. So it'll automatically give you uh, recommendations. And then you can say, hey, uh, sort based on price. Uh, I'm looking for, uh, you know, Samsung and, uh, um, you know, uh, Xiaomi, right? So these brands. So it can, so you can, so it, the interaction is essentially going to be more of voice or text-based, where and most of the things are essentially going to happen around those spaces. So this is uh, something that would be interesting, right? Um, so if you kind of see the age that we are living in, right? So the humans are hooked, right? Whereas the machines are learning. So all the machines, you know, it, it could be a hardware, it could be a car, you know, which is learning from the traffic. It could be your computers, you know, or the different servers like Google or Microsoft or Amazon, you know, which is interacting and learning. Um, whereas humans are, you know, the learning rates are essentially coming down, right? So, so some takeaway for all of us essentially is, uh, this is a classic, uh, you know, which is also said in the industry. So uh, the message for all of us essentially is get better at your work, else it will be assigned to robots, right? So um, yeah, so this is going to be a great age where robotics and AI uh, is, is going to uh, you know, help us grow. And I firmly believe um, the current and the next decade would be a collaboration between uh, the human beings and the bots. So it is not going to be humans versus robots, but it is going to be a great collaboration between uh, you know, humans and robots, uh, which is going to help in creating better systems for all of us. Uh, thank you. Uh, hope all of you enjoyed uh, the talk. Uh, pleasure to be here again. Thank you.